Well, uh, it was an adventure. It was a real adventure. I can't believe it's just been 30 years. It seems like it's gone so fast. We had the best time working on this together. I knew we had a real uh, jewel in the crown of Atlanta. The vision for the garden was a vision to see Atlanta be the city it could become. But it was a period of time in which the park needed something. People in Atlanta were adamant about what was going to happen to their parks. I was working in Colony Square. I walked down to Piedmont Park on my lunch hour and hung out at the greenhouses. The greenhouse had a broken heater. It was supposed to be providing all plants for all parks in all of Fulton County. The next morning at 7 o'clock, I just went and I walked in the door. I said, Maynard, I'm Barbara Humphreys. The first thing Commissioner Moore said was, we will let you have the site on a year-to-year -year basis if you can prove that you've got the community support. He agreed to let us lease a part of Piedmont Park. From 1976 until 1980, we renewed the lease annually, realizing that we weren't going to make any progress toward developing major capital improvements until we had a longer term. Do you know how little a trailer is? <laughs> People would come up and scratch their heads and say, what in the world are you doing? Because we had little, we called them demonstration gardens. So Ann Kremen came from New England. So we sat down and she showed us one little garden that was a demonstration garden out that you had to leap over a puddle of water to get into. So we said, well, we just love the fact that there's going to be a botanical garden. What can we do to help? She was uh, keeping the uh, trailer open on Saturdays. She and Blossom the cat. The first ball, again, a lot of people said, what is this? And then they came to the site and they were entranced. The first one I attended, Ryan Ganey helped us, and we had beautiful flowers. You can't say enough about Mary Wayne Dixon. She's just been there and supportive from the very beginning. All three of my daughters surprised me at the front door two hours before we got in the car to come down here, and we danced all night long. <laughs> the band was fantastic. It was called the Pink Flamingos. John Bitter and I were invited to uh, come up and dance with the Go-Go Girls. All of the balls are nice because it's the time when you can reconnect with many of the people who have been associated with the garden for such a long time, and that happens every year, so, so that's a nice part about the ball. Uh, Mr. Philip Alston and Holcomb Green invited me to lunch. Holcomb said, I've agreed to be chairman of the first capital campaign to make the botanical garden happen. If you agree to be president of the board. And our first building was what we call Garden House. And then Ann said, you know, we really do need a place to have some kind of assembly. And, and so Day Hall was built. became uh, president, I think it was about 1986. When the conservatory was being built, uh, I was here, I came by practically every day. Uh, and uh, Cramon, I think, needed somebody to um, ventilate with. The Fuqua Conservatory was our first really large gift. My goodness, where would we be without Dottie Fuqua and, uh, and the support of the Fuqua family? Ann Cramond, who became one of our closest personal friends. It was a very sad day when she, she left us. It, it was a very sad time for me, but yet when I think about the exuberance of Ann Cramond and the enthusiasm and the vision that she had for the garden, it's, it's happy. It's happy. It's been a whirlwind nine years. And you know, like so many things in life, you look back and it's gone like that. It's been too quick in my opinion. Um, 
But it's been a wonderful experience because we've taken this beautiful garden that I always thought was one of the finest canvases to paint on, and we painted a little more color in this corner and a little more splash over here and more flowers over here, so we've just taken it to the next level. I mean, how lucky is it to come to a garden where those who started it as tenacious volunteers are still here and they get to come and celebrate all the great things that we're doing today and see the changes to the garden that they started. Every time I left here, I left with a smile on my face. Uh, everyone was so happy and uh, it was a real pleasure to uh, uh, come here and be involved. But it was fun just to watch it develop and grow, just the whole process. But over the years, it's grown. We're incredibly pleased. We just couldn't be more pleased with how it's turned out. It's just a miracle. It's, tr it's truly a miracle. It's unbelievable what it now looks like. And one thing and another has just led to this miraculous, wonderful thing that has happened that the city of Atlanta supported. The Atlanta Botanical Garden is the happiest place and destination in the city of Atlanta. From a personal standpoint, it, it was most rewarding. Uh, and as I said, I count myself very fortunate that I was able to be involved with the garden for such a long time. Dottie Fuqua and I have one thing that we shared in common. And our friend, of Lady Bird Johnson, always said, where flowers bloom, so does hope.